most amazing parts of the celebration of Diana's life when you walk into the wedding gallery. You are greeted by Diana's handmade wedding gown and all 25 feet of the flowing train. Let's take a look. It's considered to be the most famous dress in the world. And right now it's at the Grand Rapids Art Museum. We are joined by Nick and Graham. And let's go back a bit here. The year was 1981, and this truly was the wedding scene around the world. Yeah, absolutely was. And, and when the Emmanuels were picked, I think a lot of people were not surprised, but they were a very young design company. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was a big task for them to kind of take this on, because the whole of the world they knew was going to be watching. And everybody wanted to get a little glimpse or steal a secret, right? Absolutely. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Their studio in, uh, in Brook Street in London was completely, all the windows were completely papered out. Um, they had the press going through their bins, so all their rubbish had to be taken away um, daily um, by, you know, it, uh, so it was, no one could go through the bins and find bits of fabric they were hoping to find or sketches or even, even you know, what beading was going to be going on on this thing. So it was highly, highly top secret. Right. So when it came out on TV or for the those lucky enough to be there in person, it was a debut of a fantastic Oh yeah, they had, they had a press blackout on it, and the press were informed the morning of the actual wedding, but they weren't allowed to open the envelopes of how it was made, how long the train was, or anything like that, until Princess Diana got out the carriage, like here, mm -hmm. and then they could open the envelopes, and they had all this kind of thing, but also they were worried about other fashion companies completely doing replicas of it straight mm -hmm. away. So I think that was kind of the secrecy bit around it. But it also created a buzz, which I think was quite nice because it was such a party atmosphere in London. Mm -hmm. Another thing with the actual dress, it's tradition in um, England that the bride's parents pay for the dress. And it's a beautiful dress, and I think she had three bridesmaids and page boys and everything. Uh -huh. But that cost $1,900, which at the time, I mean, we're going back quite some time now. Right. But it doesn't seem a lot of money, mm -hmm. but I think it was again because the Emmanuels were so involved in it, they were going to get so much fame from it. Mm -hmm. And Princess Diana working so closely with the Emmanuels, I think her brief was, please make me a fairy tale princess dress, which I think they definitely did. And a, a billion people actually saw that. And I think it did create dreams of other brides, which they all came with the puff sleeves and the trains and that kind of thing. So it is a beautiful, beautiful dress. It is. And now we know this dress. It's famous. What are some of the details about the dress that, uh, you know, how much fabric, how many beads? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the dress itself is made of um, ivory silk tulle. Um, the, under the weight of it is actually very, very, it amounts to nothing. It's the lightest of, of, li of, of dresses. What weighs a lot is actually the, the underskirt, the tulle underskirt, which there's about 100 yards of tulle under there. Mm -hmm. And that does weigh a lot. Um, the, the, the lace panel on the front was, was actually uh, is made from a piece of... Uh, lace that was given to the Royal Needlework Society by Queen Mary. Um, the actual lace detail on the sleeves was, was uh, made by a company in Nottingham. Mm -hmm. So there was only kind of three elements that, that actually went together to make this, this particular dress. But she wanted something in the style of a 19th century style kind of, you know, mm -hmm. Victorian kind of fairy tale sort right. of dress. And the cup sleeve was very popular. Oh yeah, it was definitely too. a style of, it, of, it, of its time and, and with matching bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. And also there are 10,000, or thereabouts, um, mother of pearl sequins, as you can see going down the side here, all hand sewn. Mm -hmm. So again, the people that must have worked in the Emmanuel studio, I mean, they did it, I think, for love of our royal family and Princess Diana. But it is such a wonderful piece. I don't think that there is any other workmanship that could, could have gone into that. All handmade lace, everything, so. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's wonderful. And you are going to get the chance to see the wedding dress and learn much more about it during your visit to the Grand Rapids Art Museum during Diana a Celebration. Wow, it truly was a fairy tale. It was really just was. incredible. You know, we've, we saw the video as they were setting up, as Graham and Nick were setting up the display. They're wearing gloves. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that whole it process. It was amazing. Well, they are the only ones who can because they know exactly how it should be shipped and packed. And actually, 
everything is documented when it comes and when it leaves because it is going to leave and actually go back to England and be at the Althorpe Estate for Diana's birthday, which is in early July. So it's going to stay here till mid-February, mm -hmm. and then it gets cataloged, if you will, to make sure nothing has changed. Of course, it would take a long time to get every 10,000 of those <laughs> beads and sequins catalog, but they really do a thorough um, checking of it, and then they ship it, and they do it again when it arrives in its next destination, and Graham and Nick are a huge part of that. They know this inside and out. Right, and they're, they're handling so. history. They sure are. It's a huge responsibility. And I think that they realize that honor. Mm -hmm. They were yeah. a pleasure to talk with and to learn from during oh, this yeah. whole process. And no flash photography inside that room. No. Because no. they say that flash is not good for the fabric. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, they said it's a little bit difficult to get around camera phones these days with yeah. people, but a lot of those don't have flashes. Some of them do, so you want to keep that in mind, too, if you're going to the exhibition mm -hmm. soon. Yeah. Well, one thing that cannot be argued is that Diana was indeed a fashion icon. And one woman very closely tied to the fashion world is from here in West Michigan, and she helped get this amazing exhibition right here to our city. We'll talk with Pamela DeVos up next and just what it means to have such a special exhibition in her own backyard. Before she became a princess and fashion icon to the world, Diana went to finishing school in Switzerland. But she missed her family and friends, so she returned to England to work as a nanny. Stay with us. We have much more when we come back. Are you West?